Hello and welcome to online video training. Today's topic is building forms. To create a new form, select Add Content from the top menu bar and then Web Form. Add a title for your form. This should be short and descriptive and will be the text at the top of the form as well as the URL for the form. Select the appropriate office. You probably will only see your own office listed. In the body field, you can enter help text for the user. You can use the formatting toolbar to add bold or italics. You could insert a link or an image as well if you'd like. And then save. Next, we'll add components for the form. These will be the form fields that the user will complete. The first one I'll use is full name. The type of this field is a text field. I am going to have it be a mandatory field and then add. This page will show you all of the available options for this component. In the description box I'm going to enter some help text for the user. I'm seeing that it's mandatory. I can add text to the left or the right of the text field if I'd like. And the label display I'm going to change to inline. So the label would be the full name and I'm going to have it be inline as opposed to on top of the text box. Next I'm going to ask for email address and the type there is email. Now this will validate to make sure it's something at sign and then something so it's a valid email address. Make that mandatory and add it. There's that description field again. This is optional but I'm going to enter a little bit of help text for the user. I'm going to change that label display again to inline and save that component. Next I'm going to ask for comments. This text type is going to be a text area so it's going to be a box that the user can enter their own comments in. I am not going to make it mandatory. Add that component. I'll add a description for the user. Width and height I'll leave as the defaults, but you can specify if you'd like. Resizable, I'll allow the user to resize this, so if they want to add a lot of text, the box will increase in size. And I'll save that component. Next I'm going to add ask for their preferred day. Now this is going to be the type select options. I'll make this mandatory and add it. So I'd like the user to select from a preset list of days. In my description I'm going to tell them to put a check mark next to their preferred day. And then here's where I can include options. If I am going to allow them to check more than one, I can check off that multiple box. For the options, I need a safe key, which is a machine readable key, with followed by a pipe sign and then the text that the user will see. So you see there my safe key is Wednesday abbreviated, then pipe, then Wednesday. That's what they'll see. I'm going to use a, well actually I'm not going to. I could have used a preset if, I, if all of the days of the week were options. If I use list box it will be a drop down box. 
I'm going to leave that blank so that they will see all the options and will be able to check the ones that they'd like. Next I'm going to ask for their preferred time of day. Again, this is a select. I'm going to make that mandatory and add it. I'll add a short description for help text for the user. In this case, I'm going to allow them to select two preferred time blocks. So I'm going to put a check mark next to that multiple. There's my machine readable key. 9 to 10 will be what the user sees. pipe sign 11 to 12. Because I select off selected multiple, this will give the user check boxes as opposed to the previous one where I only wanted them to select one day of the week. The user in that case will see radio buttons. They can only select one. change that label display. Actually, no, I'll leave that as above. Save it. For my next label, I'm going to use a field set for personal information. This is where you can put a series of questions underneath a header of sorts. I'm going to move personal information up and I'm going to slide full name and email address to the right. So those two components will be beneath personal information. Other, other available files, you can have the user be able to upload a file. There's my component. My select type is going to be file. When you do this, you need to check off the allowed file extensions. If I wanted to put these into a subdirectory, I could specify there. Here are all the available file types. I'm going to check off the ones that I'd like. PDF, doc, docx, this will allow the user to upload any of those file types. Change my label display to inline and save that component. Some other available options. You can add a time that will validate that it's in the right format. I'm going to go ahead and save this now. When I go to the email section, this is where I specify where I would like the form submissions to go. I have it go to my email address. I could add a custom subject line if I wanted. The default is form submission from and then the name that you gave your form. Email from address, it, it will look like it's coming from webmaster at bentley.edu. Again, you can add a custom if you'd like. Email from name will come from offices at Bentley University. You can add a custom again. You can also add a component. I'm going to have all of my components emailed to me. If I only wanted the person's name, for example, and maybe their file emailed to me, then I could just select those two. Here's where I can add another email address if I'd like it to go to someone else as well. Save. Now we have a confirmation message. This is the message that the user will see after they click Submit. So this will show up on the screen in front of them.
You can format it using the format formatting toolbar. You can add images or text links if you'd like. Alternatively, I could add a URL that would act as a redirect. So after they hit submit, the URL that you specify here is, is where they would wind up. Instead, I chose to send them a confirmation message. Here's where I can change the status to open or closed. And that's now set. Clicking view, I can see my web form. There's that help text that I put into the description field. I'm going to go ahead and submit a form so that you can see what it looks like afterward. And we can check the results. Put in my own name and email address. I'm not going to upload a file, but I could browse my computer and then upload whatever I'd like. Here's my text area for comments. Here's my radio buttons to select one day of week as a preference. And then for my time I can select more than one and I'll submit. Checking the results tab, well you saw that little box pop up indicating that I received an email because I had my email address listed as the one to send form submissions. You'll see the form number, the day and date it was submitted, the user if it was a logged in user, Clicking edit gives you the ability to actually change the text. So if someone calls and says they incorrectly submitted a form, you can go in and make that fix for them. Analysis will show you how many people submitted for each field. Table is the one I like. It will show you each submission in one line. All the information including the things that they entered in the form fields. And that will be one line per submission. I can download the information. Clicking on the download tab, I can export the information as delimited text, in which case I would select my own delimiter, or you could download it in Excel format. Here are the fields that I'm going to include in the export. I could uncheck whatever ones I didn't necessarily need. And I would select download if I were going to actually download this information. Most people will download all of their information at the end of when the form is live and then they'll clear the form results so that the form is ready to use the next time. If I try to find this form, the easiest way is to select Find and then change the type to Web, web Form and Filter. Then you'll see all your web forms in one list. Thank you for watching this video clip. If you have any questions, please let me know.